Greetings, this is the Timeshare Traveler. Today is episode 155, 155, buying a second home versus using timeshares. So the overview is I'll talk about things to consider, um, cost of a second home in a retirement community, sort of the annual maintenance fees in the retirement community, and how long will you stay in your second home? And then la last two things is, do you have enough points to live part-time um, at your desired location? And lastly, just a summary of all the points. Before I do that, though, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my channel, and I'll be right back to dive into the details. Hang in there. Hi, this is Cliff, and I'm the Timeshare Traveler. Welcome to my channel. The purpose of my channel is to educate those who love traveling in timeshares. I've been an owner, owner for 15 plus years at uh, Timeshare Ownership. I have elite ownership with Marriott, Hilton, and Worldmark. I have a, published over 100 Timeshare video reviews, and I've published over 95 Timeshare tips. I can be found on Facebook at Timeshare Trav, or Twitter, Timeshare Trav, and on the web at www.timesharetraveler.com. Although this is typically targeted at, uh, at retirement, it could be also like a second home or a weekend home or various things like that. So, the things to consider. Um, um, first of all, real estate does appreciate, uh, timeshares don't. So if you buy a second home, you're going to get appreciation. So I can't say that you're, gonna get, you're not going to get appreciation with timeshares. They have actually become pretty, not, not worth zero, but close. Um, and get another thing you need to consider is how long will you use a second home or would you really like your second home to be at multiple places um, the next point do you already own timeshares if the answer to that is yes then the cost to add what would be required drops because you already own some of it so it's really not a comparable um, to, to a full purchase um, if no then you need to decide if timeshares are even a, a possible option for you to use in this way um, and the last thing they sort of considered that I, I, I looked at it was, do you want to go to the same place every year or does your second home, would it be better if it was more of a virtual home and you could go various places? The next thing I, dis I discussed was the cost of, of a, a second home in a retirement community. Again, this could be a lake house or a weekend cottage, but most people it's typically a retirement type thing. Um, and I'm going to follow with kind of the Arizona mo mode because there's a lot of that sort of the snowbird model and there's kind of the mobile home example around 100 to 150k maybe a little more um, for a small mobile home park but the fees are can be between 800 and a thousand dollars a month for activities and rentals um, and there's the on uh, Arizona condo model and that's sort of the two-bedroom condo in Sun City uh, West is priced at 300,000 and these can go if you get a house it can go even well beyond that 500 oh you can get unlimited but this start with kind of the entry level 300,000 and that can be a one bedroom as well um, and again the monthly association fees and recreation centers they come with that and part of sort of what a timeshare has um, can be roughly $900 a month um, and again reminding how much of the year would you use it are you the snowbird or is it actually not really your second home it's the home you're going to eventually move to um, would timeshare be maintenances be comparable so we'll address that next okay let's talk about the annual maintenance fees in the retirement community versus a timeshare so the air examples like arizona examples i gave you were eight hundred dollars to a thousand dollars a month and maintenance fees go up and so do uh for timeshares and maintenance fees for retirement communities also go up um in timeshare costs this would be equivalent of about 75,000 annual Hilton Grand Vacation or 100,000 points in World Mark. And what that depends on is kind of where, you, in case of um, a Hilton Grand Vacation, where you got your deeds. And you, if you got them in Hawaii, they may be more. But if you have large deeds, it varies all over the place. But that's, I was just trying to give a ballpark number. Um, and. Um, there's no need with deeds as far as their undeeded properties in the world mark. Um, they have a choice to use timeshare in more locations. So that's sort of the plus side with the maintenance. Uh, can be a negative. Some people see staying in one place is great. One of the next factors is how long will you stay in your second home? If you plan to stay there six months or even greater, or even four months or five months, then, then the maintenance fees are similar. Then the length of stay, uh, but the length of stay is greater. Um, 
if you prefer a variety and would like to basically have a virtual second home, then timeshare may be better. Um, depends on wanting to stay in the same location or variety of locations. Same location and own furniture makes a second home a better option than um, that's kind of the snowbird model that you see so many people employ. It works quite well. Okay, now I'm going to address um, how, how far can you get those points. You know, I, I stayed with the sort of numbers that match kind of the maintenance fees so that the maintenance fees would be the same. And again, this would, you could say these is 75,000 new points because you already have the other ones. But I wanted to keep the maintenance uh, the same regardless. Um, so um, 75,000 points in Hilton Grand Vacations. A one bedroom is about 7,500. Can be a little more, can be a little less, but that's in peak season. Um, so you could stretch it further, but that's about equal to 10 weeks. And with 100,000 points in World Mark, and the average can be eight to nine or 10, so I just rounded it to nine, uh, 9,000 points for one bedroom in peak season. Um, that gives you about 11 weeks away. So again, sort of gives you a sense if you're gonna go beyond two months, it starts to look like it's a better deal um, to have a real home versus a virtual home, which is what I would call the timeshares. And just to end with kind of the summary bottom line is second home wins when uh, having an appreciated asset really matters. Um, like mostly it does. Um, like a location and like being home, which means uh, always go to the same place and want, want to spend more than two months in that second home or lots of weekends. Um, so that's when the, the second home wins. When timeshare wins is you want to travel to different spots. So you want that virtual um, second home. Um, plan to use two months, a year, maybe a little more, but a little less, you know, but in that general ballpark and you want to stay at your main house for the rest of the time. Um, and you don't want the hassle of someone watching your home when you're traveling. So when you have a second home, someone's watching one of the homes that you're not at. So that's kind of when, if that becomes a big a difficulty for you, then the time short release gives it a little more sway. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.